Hello, my name is Stephen Cauley, and today I'm going to be speaking about our MRM paper entitled Auto Calibrated Wave KIP Reconstruction Joint Optimization Between the Case Based Trajectory and the Parallel Imaging Reconstruction. So, there are several fast MRI acquisition techniques which rely on efficient traversal of case space. And what we see is that limitations in hardware and other physical effects can cause these trajectories to deviate from their theoretical path. Typically, additional measurements are used in order to approximate these discrepancies in an attempt to improve the image quality. As an alternative, people have looked at alternating between optimizing the trajectory-related variables and the parallel imaging. And finally, there are standard methods for solving nonlinear least squares problems, which could be directly applied. However, they can be computationally demanding. In this work, we propose a joint optimization direct technique to estimate the trajectories simultaneously with the underlying image, and we accomplish this through the use of model reduction. In this work, we demonstrate this auto-calibrated technique for clinically relevant wave KIB acquisitions. Wave KIB is an efficient acquisition technique building upon 2D KIB and bunch phase encoding, where we play out sinusoidal gradients along Y and Z, and couple that with a standard Cartesian readout along GX. If you look at the case-based coverage, we actually have helixes enabling us to efficiently encode the information. In order to visualize this, we can look at the effects of playing out a sinusoidal gradient along Y and Z. When we couple that with a 2D Kypie shift, we get a very efficient encoding of the information to highly accelerate and use parallel imaging to get an accurate reconstruction. If we look at the performance of Wave KIP compared to traditional 2D KIP or Sense, you can see that Wave KIP, when you push it to nine-fold acceleration factors, is the only one which is able to still get acceptable G-factor levels. If we look at how these results were achieved, going back to the original ISMREM work, a qualitative image space metric was used. This was followed by a much more robust pre-scan method. However, that was restricted to a specific orientation and field of view. And as we know, gradient trajectory errors can creep up based upon changing many different protocol parameters like field of view location, bandwidth resolution, the waveform properties, and these will change frequently in clinical and research settings. So our goal here was to create something which was robust to all of these parameters. In order to do that, we began by formulating the point spread function model. So this takes the underlying image, which is unknown, maps it through the readout Fourier transform, there you are scaling with a Y and Z specific phase. And of course, with acceleration, we end up getting accumulation in image space. And then finally, we take the inverse Fourier transform along the readout direction, and we can match that against our alias data. So we have a forward model, and we have observed data that can come together and give us a metric for evaluation. If we take a closer look at some of these variables that went into that forward model, we can start with looking at the phase, which is applied along the Y direction. So here, horizontally, you have KX, and vertically, you have Y, and this would be the sinusoidal phase, which would vary across space. And if we look at what the scanner is actually playing out and look at the frequency content of that, we can see, see that the scanner is doing a reasonable job, and we can model this accurately using a limited bandwidth and a small number of frequency coefficients. In order to examine whether or not we're improving our estimate of the point spread function, we need to evaluate the ghosting level. And as we can see with mismatches in the trajectory, we get ghosting artifacts everywhere. And this enables us to only set up a small number of test locations to observe whether or not we're improving the solution. In order to efficiently optimize these variables, we have a fast greedy approach where we go through each variable sequentially and we perform a nonlinear line search. And at each point that we're evaluating, we'll actually solve the entire sense problem across those test locations and see if we're improving the data consistency error. And then once we've reached a local minimum for that variable, we move on to the next variable and so on until we've reached convergence. In terms of performance, this allows for us to optimize in around 10 seconds for a one millimeter ISO whole brain protocol on the line. And when you compare the accuracy of our approach to the full pre-scan method, which can take tens of minutes, you can see that we perform at least as well as far as data consistency error is concerned. If you would like to see demonstrations of our method, 
it's been included as part of an SWI package, which you can get through C2P agreements from MGH or as a WIP through Siemens. And we have more sequences which are coming soon, and that's what I would like to finish the talk with. Here's a recent result where we use the joint optimization on a sequence designed by Daniel Pollock where wave Kaipi was included into MP Rage. Here I'm showing 15x accelerated results for one millimeter isotropic. The data was acquired in only 47 seconds at 3T using a 64 channel custom array coil. Here are results of the joint optimization applied to two other contrasts, T2 space and T2 space dark fluid. And what we've really been able to show is that this method generalizes to many different contrasts. And as this has enabled us to create a neuro exam, which we hope to be showing results in the upcoming ISMRM. Here we've demonstrated a model reduction technique for auto calibrated trajectory estimation. We validated our approach across many different protocol parameters like field of view, position, orientation, for the wave gradients, different bandwidth cycles, gradient amplitude and slew different scanners from 1.5, 3, and 7T, coils ranging from 20 channels to 64 channels, and different resolution cases that you would see in clinical settings. And we've been able to show equivalent accuracy to prohibitive calibration scans, which would not be practical in those situations. We think that this approach will be applicable to other fast acquisition methods through different numerical techniques. And I would like to conclude by thanking our funding agencies and you for your attention.